Back in Sydney. <laughs> Where did that bird go? The... The cow bird? Yeah. <laughs> we're really in Australia now. And today we're eating steak, starting in Sydney. Adam, you excited for steak? What's going on here? Whoa! I don't think people can appreciate how great this tree is. You certainly can't, because you're stupid. All right, let's go eat some steak. Get your, get your saliva rolling. Today on Worth It Australia Edition, we're going to have three steaks at three drastically different price points to find out which steak in Australia is the most worth it at its price. Remember when we had steak before? Will it be surpassed today? I'm pretty sure this is going to be spectacular. Spectacular? We're actually arriving right now. Look at that. Hey, it's the ocean. All great restaurants. Are at the ocean. Uh, well. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's not true. Good food is even better by the ocean. Thank you. You want to be the host? Alrighty. Take my mic. Here. Take it. Let's go. I'll be camera guy for a day. Hi, I'm Steven. My name's Sebastian Lutot, and we're at the Clovelly Hotel, close to the beach. Today we're going to be having a $16 steak that we have on our steak nights on Wednesday. It's a piece of rump. 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 It's part of the meat, it's a little bit tougher near the back of the shoulder. The rump's got a lot more flavour, because um, it's a muscle that works a bit more. The rump will come in portioned, salt, pepper. I don't do anything else, like no spices or anything on it. It's a bit of brush of uh, bone marrow that we've been melted down, just a bit oh. extra flavours with rosemary and thyme in it. Straight onto the top of the boiler, get a nice char on it, both sides, then straight into the boiler, in the middle at about 700 degrees. Chart out for about two or three minutes, both sides, and then let it rest. The steak today is going to be coming with green beans and mash. We're both pretty new to Australian beers. Is there one you'd recommend for us to have with this steak? You know what, there's a Bob Hawke one. Bob Hawke used to be an old Prime Minister of Australia. He's got a reputation for uh, sculling the fastest beer. Really? Yeah. What? The former Prime Minister? <laughs> yes. Cheers to the Prime Minister of Australia. That's nice. That's refreshing. You know what that is right there? The rump. <laughs> the rump. Ooh. Excellent. Do you want to do go. yours? Oh, mine's better, dog. No, yours. Uh, they're both good. They're both good. Mine's just better by default because it's mine. Cheers. Mmm. That's nice. Mmm. That's amazing that that's just salt, pepper, and bone marrow. It's also a steak. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It adds a lot to the flavor. It's a little bit meatier, chewier. It does have that beefier taste that you get with the rump, with the roast cuts. $16 on That's a Wednesday true. night. You got your beard, you got your friends. Like, what else do you need? You want some? That's really good, right? Adam just said it's really good. He just nodded. He just nodded. He just went. It's subtle, the way that he moves. I ordered some good Australian drinking games. And we're at a pub. I feel like this is the appropriate time to Pub it up. Yeah, well, where do we start? So there's one with, obviously, you get a coin. So you choose heads or tails. Whatever it lands, you get to scale the beef you lose. $2 coin. I call it loser downs it in the down under. Heads. What is it going to be? What's oh, it going to Let the record show <laughs> no. that the coin landed tails. Well, it's heads. Look. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's not going down. Adam, can you save me here? Is that oh shoot! Oh, maybe he should be the next prime minister. <laughs> that was a tasty steak. It was a well done medium rare steak. Oh shit. booyah! Look at that. What? The crevice. You want to jump it? Oh! <laughs> I saved hate your life. You. Thank the <laughs> <laughs> Steak facts. 70% of cattle raised in Australia are grass-fed who spend their entire life grazing freely. That's a good ratio. Right? I graze freely. I'm happy. Are you a free grazer? I'm the Graze Gatsby. Graze anatomy. Grazy in love. Beyonce. Oh, nice. Hello, my name's Kevin Donovan. I'm the owner of Donovan's Restaurant along with my wife, Gail. Wanting to create a relaxed, comfortable environment 
on St. Kilda Beach. Interestingly enough, Gail changes the interior accents of the restaurant every six months. She lightens the colors of the restaurant, changes the displays, and people come to the restaurant every six months and say, what's new? What did they change? Everything's very cozy, and yeah. I, feel, I feel very safe yeah. and like comfortable yeah. here. And that's exactly what we're trying to create. Emma, our chef, has been with us for 15 years. She's gonna show you how we cook our Tasmanian wilderness beef T-bone. My name's Emma D'Alessandro, and I'm the head chef at Donovan's Restaurant here in St. Kilda. And today we're gonna cook the grass-fed British cattle breed T-bone on the charcoal oven. So an order will come in, we pull it out, brush it with a little bit of oil, season it with salt and pepper. The Jospa oven that I cook it in sits at about 350 degrees Celsius. We'll pop it in the oven and then we constantly turn it till it gets a really nice caramelization crust on it. And then I'll bring it out and I'll rest it. So for as long as I've cooked it, I'll rest it for the same amount of time. So when I go to cut it, blood's not gonna ooze out all over the plate. So you just get this really nice tender, juicy piece of meat. And with that, you get house cut chips with rosemary salt and fried garlic, a little salad of baby cos leaves just with a lemon vinaigrette. It makes a complete meal, which is great when you're paying that sort of price for a piece of meat. To the Tasmanian beef. Right. Let's eat. Potato cheers. Potato cheers. Mmm. Holy crap. That is the most potato-y potato I've ever eaten. You wanna eat? I do. All right, let's go. Oh, that went right through. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> that awkward moment when you hold your food chairs for a little too long. Mm. This is a great steak. Look how even that medium rare is inside. That's that bacon. It's familiar in that it's a steak, but it really, I don't know, it tastes like a wild animal. Oh. It's a whole other experience on the other side of the tea. Ooh, that bone meat? <laughs> Sorry. It's so different. The meat that's right next to the bone. That's what I mean by bone meat. It's like brisket. The bone meat. The bone meat. He knows what's up. Look at that bone meat right there. I'm gonna let Adam have some of mine because it's not as gnawed on as yours. Who's a better dinner guest? How do you know when somebody enjoys your food? When they eat like this? I'm going to eat for myself. Yes, sir! Donovan's is right there. Thought we'd come out to the beach for just a moment. That steak made me feel things I've never felt before. Gnawing the meat off. Like a hyena. Yes. Like a Tasmanian devil. It was. Because that was Tasmanian beef. All right, here we go. So next up. Is a we... steak fact! One, two, three. Steak fact! <laughs> ah! Mine! <laughs> <laughs> As of June 2017, there was a bill attempting to prohibit Australian cattle that are exported from being labeled as Australian beef after they are then processed in the countries that import them to be sold. Oh, because they're not processing it good enough. Go it doesn't meet their standards. So we're on our way to the last steak place. It's back in Sydney, but before we go, I have a treat for you. We're gonna go to the farm where the Wagyu was raised. Let's go meet some cows. My name is David Blackmore. I'm the founder of Blackmore Wagyu Beef. This farm is a breeding farm. The calves are born here and conceived here. What is Wagyu beef? Wagyu beef is a Japanese breed of cattle. A lot of people think it's a process. The Japanese have got this unbelievable breed of cattle that produce this unbelievable meat. How the hell did they do it? You're talking about very, very accurate information. Average daily weight gain, the marbling score, every animal has a different nose print. That was how they've been able to make sure that there was no cheating, keep accurate records. I can do this for probably at least 10 generations on all these cattle that are behind us. We've got an unbelievable database with over 10,000 animals now recorded. So we can look at that and see which of our best breeding cows and which are the best bulls that they breed to. What makes a cow delicious? To be honest, a lot of love and I know that might sound really, really corny, but the main thing that can affect the quality of meat is whether the cow has been under stress. So we actually monitor everything from prior to conception right through to the weaning of the calf and then every other stage right through as well. You know, I like the fact that we can put flavour into beef and make it something really different and special. Do what you love, right? And it is, I do love what I'm doing. I gotta say, truly, this has been the coolest experience. Yeah, it's been great fun having you guys here too.
My name's Corey Costello. I'm the head chef here at uh, Rockpool Bar and Grill in Sydney. And today you guys are going to be having two of the David Blackmore Wagyu steaks. We get a lot of whole animals in them and we break them down into all the different various cuts, but then we have them all aging up in a room. What is the advantage of dry aging meat? The natural moisture that's in the meat. When you dry age, it intensifies that moisture. It's like reducing a stock down and making it more flavoursome. The first steak you guys will be eating will be the Wagyu Eye of Chuck. Really, really big in flavour. And we actually, we never used to serve it as a steak. We used to cut it up and braise it. All the chefs would come along and cut off the first cuts of them and start eating them and eventually I was like, that's it. If this is good enough for all of us to eat, it's good enough for the guests. So a new steak was born. Our butcher will age them anywhere between 21 up to about 75 days. And we very, very lightly sprinkle them with salt, a little bit of oil, and then we cook it over a wood fire grill. Crust it up onto each side and then just before the guests are ready to eat it, we give it a little sear up again and then I slice it on a board. Certain steaks have grains that run through them and we try and cut them out so that the guest gets the best experience. That's just for our time in Australia. Saw a cow. Sure did. Yeah. It still gets me. It's still, yeah. The first sip of wine always still just. The current table setting, onion rings and steak, is Child Andrew's perfect <laughs> table setting. To Andrew's you don't world. do it too hard. Oh my god. Wow. Just straight up fun yet. That's crazy. That's so good. All right, no. I've waited long enough. So this is the eye of the chuck. This is the cut that chefs prefer to eat when they come to Rockwall. Are you ready to put this in your mouth? Who are you talking to? You. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am. Cheers. Ding. Mm. I'm just gonna go right back mm. in. All the best things in life are done with your eyes closed. Sleeping, making out, I can't disagree with that. It's really good. Oh. It tastes like a beef stock turned into bubble gum. It's reverse bubble gum. It's reverse it bubble gum? It tastes better the more you chew into it. <laughs> the next one you have is the grass-fed sirloin from sort of the middle of the back of the animal. Wow. Very high marbled, beautiful eating. We've got it for $150 on the menu at the moment, so it's a bargain. Bargain at $150. <laughs> bargain at $150. Comes with lemon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Immediately, visually, Whoa. this one looks crazy compared to the other. Sizzle me with your zest. Not literally me. Look at that marbling. And the grain structure is crazy. It's like a comb of meat. Cheers to all of Australia. That has a very intense flavor. I've gone blind. Don't worry, we won't make out. It's so easy to eat, I can't slow down. And it's already cut for you. I could demolish one of these in about five minutes if I was by myself, not trying to be conscious of other people watching me. Mm. There's only salt and lemon on this guy? All the flavor is baked into the cow. I just wanna sit here and enjoy this for the rest of my life. Well, you can't, because I'm about to eat it all. Ready to go home? I'm coming home. Yeah, and with that, Back in the States, back in the Worth It Mobile. Driving back on the right side of the road. Because it's the correct side or because it's the right side? Both. All right, so the trip is over, but we must now decide which steak was the most worth it to you at its price in Australia. The Clovelly Hotel had an amazing value steak. That would be the perfect post-beach steak. Do you eat post-beach steaks? Pre-beach. Pre-beach steaks. The steak that was most worth it to me at its price was certainly Donovan's. I knew you were gonna say that. I mean, that place is what I would want a restaurant to look like if I operated it. Here's what I'll say about this steak video. Every location was amazing. But there must be a winner. My winner goes to Rockpool. Whoa. It's not that $150 sirloin, it's the Eye of the Chuck. It's the Eye of the Chuck, it's the thrill of the steak. Bite Adam. Five for five when you guys chose the same thing. We're halfway through the season, and you guys are the same person. <laughs> it only gets better from here, so stay could, tuned, kids. Could get worse. That's what you call a teaser. What do you think Australians call up here? Because we call that down under. Are we up over? Um, All right, Australia over. Oh, yes!